Hey, what is up guys? Ben here, um, and welcome to your 16th FRC Robotics Programming Tutorial Java video. Yeah, let's get started with this one. Um, okay, so now we have two sequenced items. And now that we have those, we're ready to uh, dive into the auto. So um, I'm going to, let's see, let's... What do we not need? We don't need racha, we don't need rollers, because that's the whole point of object-oriented programming. Kind of we encapsulate that functionality inside of it. So um, I said before that we're going to be working with like basically pretty much one class in here, and that's sequencer factory, because that's how we're going to be making um, the sequences that we're going to want to run. Okay, so I'll walk us through the rollers that I've set up here. And if we have extra time, then we will kind of design some more sequences with the ratchet. Um, okay, so we have a public enumeration here. Um, basically, as we start to get a bunch more auto types, then we're going to have multiple autos here. That's going to be really important for like the 2016 game, because like if you have a bunch of different defenses that you're able to go over, then a bunch of different autos, it's going to seem pretty likely. Um, so you just uh, comma and then put those across if you're going to have multiple autos but we only have one for right now, so we're just gonna have the rollers auto. So say in that autonomous routine, um, you, uh, you are going to uh, have this method called uh, create auto, and that's gonna take in an auto type. And it's a public auto type, so then you can say like sequencer factory dot, um, or, uh, so then you can um, put, call, call this auto type later in your robot code when you're constructing um, or when you're just creating an auto. Um, okay, so you're going to switch on the different auto types. So you can, depending on which auto type you select, you can um, decide which auto to run. And um, since it's a, it's a method that's looking for a sequencer, um, you're going to have each of these cases pointing to a new, um, a new sequencer object. And each of the sequencer object creates a, an array of sequenced items. And then within the array of sequenced items, that's when you create the, that's when you put a string together, the sequenced items that you have created already here. So right now I just have new run rollers. So it's not really even a sequence. It's just one thing that's happening. Um, and you're running the rollers at, if you look into this method a little bit, uh, a speed and a time. So you're running the rollers at half speed for three seconds. And so anytime you run the rollers auto, you're just going to be intaking the tote um, at half speed for three seconds. And then you're going to be returning that sequencer. Um, or if you get to the bottom, then you just the default is to just return a new sequencer with nothing in it. But hopefully, when you hit this return statement, then you're going to return this sequencer right here. And it's going to go into the auto type. Um, so I will, in the next video, I say I probably will um, set up, I'll create the auto inside of the robot class so we can see how all that works. But I just wanted to show you also that sequencer factory isn't only used for autonomous routines. We also use it like in our teleop sequences. So say you want to do two things, I'd like you want to press one button and do two things, then that is when you will use a teleop sequence, which is also created in the sequencer factory. Um, but it looks a little bit different. Um, public static sequencer, it's not create um, auto anymore, it's now create whatever you want it to be. So create run rollers twice. So this time I'm going to return a new sequencer, which takes a sequenced item of um, uh, new run rollers, and I'm going to run it at 0.5 speed for 3 seconds, and then I'm going to run it at 0.5 speed for 5 seconds. Um, and uh, I guess that'll just run it for 8 seconds. <laughs> Let's change this to 0.2, so then it'll change speeds halfway through. Um, okay, so next time I will create a an auto for the ratchet. I'll combine these together, make a second type of auto, and hopefully put that into the robot code and see how that all works. Um, so I hope 
that was helpful, and I hope to see you guys next time. Uh, thank you.